Now let's bring in Major Garrett now for a look at how the White House and the Trump campaign intend to get through this. Major, good morning to you. As you know, the ramifications are enormous on this. What are you hearing from the White House and how are they handling it? Two questions there. Well, let's talk about the national security implications, because that is one thing that we should keep a very close eye on. Not only is every reporter in Washington trying to figure out just how sick the president is or might become, every adversary of the United States is doing precisely the same thing. And our friendly intelligence agencies are also trying to find out. This is a time for maximum transparency from this White House about this issue, to be as clear as possible about what happened, when it happened, and what the president's condition is on a day-to-day -day basis, to reassure our friends and also to send a very strong signal to our foes that the president can carry out the business of the presidency. He is not in any way limited, and the work of the U.S. government under his watch goes on. That is probably the most dominant conversation going on within the White House this morning. How to project that, how to carry that out, and how to reassure a somewhat nervous American public about this news development, but also to send that message globally to those who wish us well and wish us ill. Now, I would imagine a lot of people in the White House are freaking out in, in terms of worrying about their own exposure. For instance, it was reported in Paula's piece that Hope Hicks was, was tested positive. President Trump knew that and did a fundraiser in New Jersey. So I'm wondering about the timeline and who else might have been exposed to this. Well, this is going to be a classic illustration of what I just spoke about, Gail, the transparency. Yeah. You have to, as the White House, explain what the president knew, when he knew it, and those that you are actually contra contact tracing. Explain to the American public how this process works. Show what you're going to do. Explain all the people you're going to contact and all the people the president came in contact with to reassure not only them, but explain to the American public how this process works when someone in a very important position contracts the virus, even though this president, as we know, has lots of protections and has regular testing that the fact that the virus got in, got to him, is indicative of how easily it's transmitted, but also what you do once that information is obtained. This is a window into this operation at the White House, and the president's willingness or unwillingness to be candid with the American public will be part of the political discussion, not just about the coronavirus, but his own relationship to the American public. Yeah, the statement also said that he intends to govern while he is still in quarantine. I'm curious about how that's going to work exactly, and what will this mean for his campaign? Well, let's talk about governing. The president can do that, either from the residence or from the Oval Office, with very limited contact with people. There'll be no contact with people. He can get lots of memos electronically. He can make phone calls. And certainly, anyone who's worked in this White House, Gail, knows that there's many times the president communicates to them on very important matters via Twitter. On campaigning, this will be a significant drawback. No more fundraisers, no more rallies. And if there are rallies in the future, what will they be conducted under? Will there be far more masks? Will there be much more social distancing? There will have to be. And lastly, there might have the implications for the presidential debates themselves. The next presidential debate, October 15th. I'd have to believe that is somewhat up in the air. All right, Major, a lot to unpack there. Of course, we're all very concerned about the president and first lady. Thank you very much.